Good morning, everybody. Hope you're having a great day. It's Tuesday. I had a consultation, but the teacher canceled on me. So that's okay. People have family obligations, so there's no worries in my book. Today, I actually have a really great surprise to wake up and start the day with, and I'll show you. So today, my Thai wife surprised me with a super delicious soup. It's a pumpkin, coconut milk. Let me see if I can give you guys a stir real quick. Watch this. We got long bean inside, have pumpkin, have chilies from the garden, have herbs, bay, Thai basil, all kinds of, look at that. Look at the chili in there. Pumpkin, basil, oh my gosh. And then I always ask my loving partner, can you please crack the egg for me? Right? Because I don't do a good job. So you know you have a great partner when she always cracks the egg for you or he always cracks the egg for you. So as you guys can see right here, we have some amazing pumpkin. We bought four yesterday, so one just went into the, the soup today. Whoop. <laughs> and then uh, we got some rice here, some organic rice white rice and some rice berry. And then outside today, we got the neighbors working hard, out here getting the mushrooms ready. This right here is basically, it's like rotten potato, um, bamboo charcoal, swati cop. <laughs> and then you guys can see this stuff right here. Her dad made this all handmade. These are like, this is like the, bam, the, the mushroom house made with bamboo. And so what they do is it's mixed with like dry rice grass and some other stuff. And then the people will put this inside here. And then in a couple days, gonna have mushrooms growing. So the key once again is what are you using the whole Teaching English Abroad gig for? Are you just looking to travel? Are you just looking to make some income? You wanna be able to you know, stay at home back in the USA as a, as a mother or as a father or as a single person, it's all good. Maybe you just wanna be able to provide for yourself. But for me, I'm going to a whole new level. I'm not just teaching English abroad, being a digital nomad. By the way, that's, a great, that's great if somebody wants to do that. But what about in five years, 10 years? You know, you gotta have a long-term one decade, two decade long-term plan. I've been dreaming about this for a long time and now I'm here. So the money that you're making every single month, how are you investing that money? How are you using it to create a better future? And that is the real key. Because you guys can see right here, we got the garden coming, we got grass. We put grass in about a couple, about a two, week, three weeks two or three weeks ago. I'm just really excited, so I'm slurring my words. And then we got some palm trees, we got papaya, we got the chilies, we got flowers, we got butterflies and honeybees and dragonflies, all kinds of beneficial insects out there. I'm coming, baby. So, the wifey's calling me, I better get going. Go guys and gals, ladies and gentlemen, all the amazing teachers. We got this delicious soup with coconut milk, long bean, potato. We got the rice, we got the egg. Oh my gosh, I can't believe it, it's so delicious. It's amazing here. I love teaching English abroad. Traveling, I finally found the place, the environment where I can thrive. And for me, it's Thailand and the USA, baby. And I will be going back to America to see my family, visit some amazing and beautiful places. And I'm just so grateful right now. And I want to share this message with you all. Have the best day ever. So I'll show you guys how we do this. First thing that you got to do when you're eating Thai food is you got to check the broth. So first thing you got to do is take a little bit of liquid. Mmm, creamy, a little sweet, spicy, no sour, no lemon, no lime inside. 
And then the next thing is you come over here and you get just a little bit of rice. Okay, just a little bit of rice on the spoon. And then you fill that up with a little bit of liquid, just like I did. Okay. And then. Mmm. Oh, yeah. And then what you got to do is you got to open this egg up. Hard boiled egg, baby. It's a duck egg. And soon we'll have our own chicken eggs. And then you get a little piece of egg just like this. Look at that beautiful color. And then you put a little bit more liquid. Mmm. Oh my gosh. And then the rice acts like a pillow for your stomach because it's spicy. Mmm. So find a place where you really want to teach English abroad. Whether you're going to teach at a school or if you're going to teach English online, some people messaged me yesterday and asked me questions saying that they don't want to teach at a school anymore. And I understand that because it's basically like a nine to five. You know, when you first start out teaching English abroad, when you know, in your early twenties or however, whatever your age is, it doesn't matter. But you know, when you're young and fresh, you know, Teaching at a school could be very fun and exciting and very rewarding as well. But once you've been teaching at a school for quite a long time, you start to realize, well, I'm giving a lot of my time into the school. Maybe I'm not really getting as much money as I deserve. Maybe I'm sweating and losing a lot of calories out here because it's super hot. But ultimately, people want to have mobility. People want to have some flexibility with their schedule and not be tied down Monday to Friday, nine to five, teaching out of school and waiting for the next holiday or waiting for the weekend. And even when you have the weekend, it's really not enough time unless you already live at the mount by the mountains, like in Chiang Mai. You can go on a overnight trip, camping trip into the mountains of Doi Su Tep or Doi Pui. Places like in Mei Rim, which is just a little bit outside the main area of Chiang Mai, like 30, 45 minutes really. So there's lots of places that you could take on a weekend excursion if you're close. And if you're close to the beach, then you've already got it made, right? But if you're in the city, or if you're someplace that's not close to the beach or close to the mountains, you're kind of missing out in a way. And I understand that. So that's why I have, I have to put this message out because... The number one thing you have to realize is that if you want mobility and flexibility with your schedule and your career as an English teacher, and you want to teach English online, then you've got to be, you've got to be researching about visas. You've got to understand the visa situation in every country. Some people want to settle down in Europe. Some people want to settle down in Mexico, Costa Rica, Thailand. Vietnam, Cambodia, there's many, many places out there that have a lower, you know, cost of living and it's maybe in a better environment, maybe more suitable climate for you, the food, the people, the language, you know, the culture. So you've got to understand and be honest with yourself about what you really want and where you can thrive. And then the next thing is don't be so naive of, oh, I'm just going to travel and I'm going to do this and blah, blah, blah. You got to be a little bit practical and realize that you're going to have to deal with the visa no matter where you are. And if you have a thousand, two thousand, three thousand dollars coming in each month just from the online teaching, that's great. But where are you going to stay for 30 days, 60 days? And then you got to buy a plane ticket, go outside the country again. And it's like this big runaround and it can get very frustrating. Now, if you're making six thousand or ten thousand dollars a month, you know, with whatever you're doing, and you got that kind of money coming in, then probably you don't have to worry about it. You can just travel around where you want. But if you're only teaching English online, then you gotta be able to budget your finances a little bit more effectively, right? So anyway, just giving a little bit of thought here to everybody, something to think about for today. I'm gonna eat this food while it's nice and warm. And then I got to get ready for one lunch class and then seven classes this evening. So it's a pretty good day. 
but overall really chill. Gonna go to the rice farm today, so be sure to stay tuned. Wow, I'm super full right now. I just had two servings of rice, two servings of the vegetable, pumpkin, coconut milk soup, and now it's time to go to the rice farm and water the fruit trees. So here is the uh, temple and uh, so cool. I just missed the cows. But there's the uh, one of the farmers out here taking the cattle out for a morning stroll. And we got Dola. Hey, good girl. Swadi cop. Hey, Swadi cop. Swadi cop. Sabayri, my. Yeah, dog. Ma. Okay. Bye now. So anyway, I'm just driving down the block. People are very friendly around here. At the same time, not in my business. That's one thing I like about Thai people is they don't really get in people's business, you know. At least from my understanding, my experience here, people may have had other experiences, but I think it's a lot about the culture in the Buddhist way. You know, you mind your own business. If you have something to share, share it, talk about it. But if you don't have anything, then just keep quiet. And a lot of tolerance here, a lot of acceptance, and a lot of respect for people's personal space and property. So uh, it's great. Anyway, let me show you guys where I'm at. There it is. There's our spot, Dala. We got it barred off so nobody can get inside. Yeehaw. And I want to say thank you. That's right, you. Thank you so much for checking out my videos on YouTube, getting the download, the information about teaching English abroad and teaching English online and traveling and living abroad and the pros and cons and, you know, everything I've been posting on this channel over the years. So again, I just want to say thank you so much. It's a real honor. It's a real pleasure to share these videos and to upload these videos for you all. So thank you so much. The glow of one warm thought is to me worth more than money. Thomas Jefferson. Hey, what's up everybody? So about one hour later, I finally finished hand plant, hand watering all of the fruit trees out here. And that's my time to relax, have some peace of mind, get out into the spirit of nature and head back and start teaching, baby. We're going home, boy. It's time to go home right now. You gotta go teach class. Let's go. So I just finished teaching a brand new student today, was very energetic, was excited to learn. His English level, speaking level, wasn't that great, but that's okay. Because that's why we as teachers are there. And sometimes we need to be reminded that not every student is going to be the same. And when you have a student who is happy to learn, who is a great listener, but they need a little bit of encouragement with their speaking skills or reading skills. You know, things like the student couldn't even respond the first or second time when I asked, what do you see in the picture? How many people do you see in the picture? I said it very, I articulated it very well. His mother was there to help, but I said it two times in throughout the first 20 minutes of the lesson, you know, we had a great time. We were speaking. He was repeating what I was saying. But, you know, like from the beginning, what I'm saying is he didn't understand how to respond to how many people, not even where are you from. His mom had to help him. But that's okay because that is a great opportunity for them to book more lessons, right? Because if all the students out there have amazing English, then we as teachers don't need to fill in, right? So... 
anyway, I'm having a wonderful day. Wanted to share that little quick tip with you all out there and make sure today you're making some healthy choices with your life, what you're eating, what you're drinking, what you're listening and what you're watching, right? Peace. So listen up. As I was reviewing this video before I process it onto my iMovie, I realized that I must state this very clearly. Teaching English abroad, teaching English as a foreign language at a school is a wonderful opportunity for you. Cultural experience, you have a monthly paycheck, you'll most likely get your visa all taken care of so you don't have to even think or worry, waste mental energy about it. So wherever you're planning to go TEFL, if it's some country in Europe, if it's Vietnam or Thailand, Cambodia, Laos, Costa Rica, China, wherever you want to teach, if you're new to this or you want to secure enough money each month, then teaching at a school is a great way to start and sustain yourself for a long-term deal. And at the same time, you can start teaching English online. See if it's for you. See if you like it. See if things pick up for you in the evening hours during the Beijing peak time, which is 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. Beijing time throughout the weekday. And then even on the weekends, you can take as many classes as, as you want, morning, afternoon, evening, because on the weekends, the students are home and parents want them to learn English and to practice their English, especially during the Chinese holidays. There's quite a few holidays. You have National Week, first week of October. You have the New Chinese New Year, which is at the end of January, beginning of February. Students are out for three to four weeks. Then you have the Dragon Boat Festival in May. There's lots of festivals, there's lots of holidays and opportunities for you to gain online teaching experience and to build up your hours. So that's why I recommend teaching at a school to start and to sustain yourself so that way you don't get into trouble about your finances. And oh my gosh, what am I going to do? Am I going to have to go back home? Because a lot of people, including myself, had to go back home because I didn't manage my finances well. But that was the past and I was able to not give up on my dreams. I didn't quit. Even though I had to go back home and live with my parents for one year, I kept the vision alive. I kept improving myself every day and I didn't give up on what's important in my heart and my soul because I'm a teacher. I love teaching, I love people, I love communication, and seeing people improve and getting the results. It's the greatest feeling in the world. Money is just a byproduct of your service, okay? So teach at a school, try out online teaching, see if it's for you, see if you can build up enough hours before you just say, I just wanna travel, I don't wanna teach at a school, I don't wanna be tied down, it's great that you realize that. It's great that you want more freedom for yourself. But make sure that you can secure enough hours throughout the week and throughout the month before you stop your contract early or when you finish your contract and then you start traveling. Because again, it comes back to the visa. So you, you just have to realize those things. And I wanted to put that out there for everybody so people can understand and take that into their account and have a great day. Now let's get this video finished. Okay, everybody, so that is it for today, Tuesday, October 29th. I had a wonderful time sharing this message and uploading this video for you today on YouTube. If you have any questions, be sure to let me know in the comment section. If you need some additional guidance, let me know and you can book a consultation with me. And don't forget, my book is still coming. I'm doing my best to finalize it from paper to digital format. Have a beautiful day. Thank you so much. Aloha and mahalo.